Howdy everyone, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics and today I've got a tool to be able to show you. And this is the Coverage Estimator tool on DNA Painter. Now, if you've used DNA Painter before, then you may be familiar with the Watto tool. And this tool is going to look a little bit like it, but it is not the same thing. So let's go over here to DNA Painter and under Tools, Tools and Watto, I click on that and it's going to give me the different tools here. And in this case, there is my save trees for Watto and there is my save trees for the coverage tool. So this is one way that we can get to this tool. Another way is up at the top, there is the tools button and it's going to list all these tools. You can scroll down and you can find the coverage estimator right here. So when you click on it initially, it's going to pop up and give you some information on how to use this. I'm going to go through and show you as we are doing it. Now you have the option of importing a GEDCOM if you want to. I'm going to be building this tree manually. What this tool is doing is it is showing you an estimate of how much DNA is represented by different people in the tree based on who has tested. So let me close this and we'll start building our coverage tree. So in this case, I can hover over and it's going to give me options to put a name for this person, to edit details, to add a child, to add a parent. Well, I'm going to just put this name and I'm going to start with it being me. It's Andy. Now you notice there's a little 0% right up here. Well, if I go to edit the details, I can put in some information that may be important later, namely birth year and death year, and whether I want to add a spouse, if I want to change the color, and that. But this is right now what DNA is represented. And you'll notice there's nothing here that says that I have tested because this tree is just very simple. So let me go and let me add a child. And I actually have several children. I have five children. Now it's highlighted each one as, hey, the next tester, the next tester, the next tester, the next tester. What this is telling me right now is any one of these people, any one of my children would be the next tester that I want to do in order to get more DNA for myself, other than myself, of course. But when you're the primary person over on the far left here, you can't mark yourself as tested. This is whose DNA you really want to get. So I could have any one of these children test. And now if I hover over one of them, you'll see, hey, there's a little box that says mark as tested. So I'm going to do that for my child. And I'm going to change this name to John, not the real name of my child, but this is just a map for that. So we see here now that John has tested a hundred percent, which means I have 50% of my DNA now represented from John, just from that one person. The next tester is all listed there. Now with these, we can also go and add some other information. Remember when I did the details, I have some new things here, but first, if this person is deceased, I can mark them as deceased. And let me close that and you'll notice the next tester goes away because that person can't test anymore. Let me edit the details here and just put 2023 as the year that they were deceased. So I know that this person has died. So what about the others? Well, there was some other details. First off, they're interested in testing. We know that they might be unknown. It might be willing to test, it might be not willing to test. It might've been that they're tested, but you don't have access to the results yet. This person, hasn't died. They're still alive, but they're not showing up as a next tester here because they're not willing to test themselves. For this other person, let's go and say that, ah, they have tested, but I don't have access. And once again, you'll see that's showing up the same as the children who have died and that. So one of the things that you might want to do is you might want to actually mark this in some other way. And in this case, there is the option to put colors and you can put any number of colors on here. So if I just want to put this yellow and that is for people that, that have tested, but I don't have access to, then that's great. 
And I can do the same thing with those who are not willing to test. So I'm going to actually color them as a red over here. And now just visually, I can see, okay, who has tested, who has not tested, and who is the next tester that is recommended here. Now, this is just simple so far because I've just got me and my family. But let me go up and let me add a parent. So now that I've added a parent, again, this tool is looking at the farthest left-hand person. So you'll notice by adding that parent, it has changed from one of my children being the next tester to me being the next tester because that's what's going to provide the most DNA for this person. If I click on myself as Mark is tested, then I have changed it to me. Now I'm 100% and this person who is my mom, she is at 50%. I can add a parent there as well. And my mom happens to have a sister and this is my aunt. So there you'll notice now, hey, that aunt is the next tester for this person. I can mark her as tested because she has tested as well. I can mark my mom as tested as well. These ones that are black now, those have all tested and their DNA is being provided into this person's here. So you can see I have 75%, let me edit this to be my grandfather, 75% of his DNA represented. Now let me add a parent here, but he happens to have some siblings. So I'm going to add a child, add a child, and add another child. Now, the thing about this generation is all of these siblings, my grandfather and his siblings, they have all passed away. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the details so that they're all listed as deceased. And this person edit details is deceased. And this next one is also deceased. And this last one is deceased. All right, but one of the things that we do know is that, hey, these people had children as well. So let me add some children here and add another child here, add a child, add a child. So this would be in my generation, as you can see, they're all lined up the same way that Waddle lines that up, but it is actually their parents that are the next testers because they're gonna have more DNA from my, my great grandfather. Now, if one of these children has deceased, we can start to do some other things. So for instance, here, if you'll notice here, my great, great grandfather, we got 37 and a half percent of his DNA represented from this group. If I mark this person as tested, well, it goes from 100%, 50% for his parent. And now my great, great grandfather, we've gone from that 37 and a half percent up to 53%. That was pretty good, right? Well, when we do the next one, so we had a jump of about 16% there from that one person testing. When we do this next one, you'll notice it jumps again now at 64%, so not as much. And that's because these children have some overlapping DNA between themselves, as well as some overlapping DNA between my mom and my aunt. So not all of the DNA that they have represents new DNA that we haven't seen from my great, great grandfather. So 16% for one of them, and then 11% for the next one is being what's represented. And now the next tester has moved to this level right here. If I test one of these, now first off, we would expect a smaller percentage automatically because it's one generation more removed. But as we've seen with each one of these lines that we're getting DNA from, it's going to have less and less of an impact on the DNA of my great grandfather. So if I mark that one as tested, it went from 64 now to 69%. Well, let's actually add a child here and this child we're gonna mark as tested. So we went from 69% now to just another 1% more. So not only did we go to the next generation, but you can see that that line, we're progressively getting less and less that's adding to it. And so that's what the goal of this tool is, is as you're mapping out your family tree, seeing, well, who is it that would be the next best tester? 
right now it is going to be this person right here. And that's because we already said that this person had passed away. We can put a death year here of 2023 just to remind us. Now, if we go back one more generation and we add another child. Now, my great grandfather, he immigrated here in 1912. So most of his family actually stayed back in England. He did have a brother that came over here, but that brother, unfortunately, he died in like 1920 or so. Whoops, now that's in the birth year. He died in 1920. So I'm going to mark him as deceased here. So we would have to go back now and these all represent the family that immigrated to the U.S. from my great-grandfather. His other siblings then are still back in England. And so I can start adding in, you know, some different lines on this. Let me add another child to get it down there and add another child. And notice here, before I started adding in other death dates, the recommended next tester is now moved to this person. But this person, he has been deceased for a while. Um, I'm just going to put deceased and I'll put uh, 1960. So then it moves down the line and I can keep on adding information of who I know is deceased, who I know is still living. And did I save that? Oh, that great grandfather. I don't have him as deceased. Edit as deceased. And you'll notice this jumps around because it's looking for where the best amount of DNA is going to be. And so if you don't have the deceased people correct, then you might all jump back to, hey, your great-great-grandfather is who we want you to test. Well, we can't test him, obviously. Let me change this one to deceased as well. And we'll see now who this moves to. All right. So this moves to this person as the next best tester. So at one point we did have it as this child right here as the next best. Now it is this one because we're going to add some to, this would be my great, great grandfather. So let's take a look at how these numbers change as we do this. We have 35% of his DNA represented right now. If we can have this descendant of his test, I'm going to mark him as tested. It went up to 39%. So let me mark as not tested and see what this one would have done. So we went from 35. This doesn't add much of anything, like a half a percent. Yeah, we went from 0.168 now to 0.718. So even though these two children are in the same generation, because of all these other people that have tested here, we're not actually going to see much more DNA from this ancestor, which means there's not going to be many more matches from what we can already find from all these other people that have tested. And so in this case, we actually want to go back to the family that's still in England and take a look at their descendants. But even then, just because of how far down this is, we're only going to add about four or 5%. And if I add another child, so their sibling, so we're at 39%. If I test this person as well, that's only going to add 2%. So not even as much as we added before. So we added about 4% before. Now we're just adding 2% with that next child. So this helps to illustrate the importance of a couple of things. One, you want to test the oldest people, the closest to whatever ancestor you're looking at. Your parents, your grandparents. If you have great grandparents still around, you want to test them because we can actually get a significant amount of DNA that represents that person from testing those people. The second important thing then is you don't want to test just one person. You'll notice here in this generation, we have my mom, my aunt, we have these other two people that have tested as well. And in my generation, as far as new, there's here's three others, this child, this child, and this child that have all tested that help to add to that DNA profile of this great, great grandfather of mine. This tool is useful in helping to map out who is tested in your family and how much DNA is represented and then deciding, well, who should I target next? So not only do you wanna put on the people who have tested represented in black, 
but also the people who have not. That's just the blank ones here. And you can use color coding to help identify maybe people who have tested, but you haven't gotten their DNA yet, or who are not willing to test, as well as marking people who have died, maybe finding descendants of them if you happen to know about those. All right, so once you've made your map, what we want to do is we want to go up and we want to save that map. And that's going to save it to your account on DNA Painter. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to save this tree. And when I go back to my dashboard here, I can see here that it has the great, great, great grandfather listed as the title of this tree. So I can go back to it, make adjustments, save it again, and be able to have that as a tool to use to find who I should test next. If you like learning how to use tools on DNA Painter, then check out this video up here. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to join FHF Extra, it's only $2.99 a month. Just click on the join button down below. Um, I hope you like my still faces. I'm not sure if I like them or not, but...